That's a good sound. Thank you very much. Wow. That was very nice. Well, a very special hello to North Carolina. Thank you. We've had a lot of luck in North Carolina. We won it twice. We won every primary. We won everything this place. We even named that beautiful little granddaughter, Carolina. She's like perfect. She's so beautiful. I'm thrilled to be back in this beautiful state with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots. I see some of them right in front of me, right? Like the man right over there who went through hell, right? Went through a little hell, but he's better looking now than he was when this little uh, accident occurred, huh? The great Steve Scalise. Thank you, Steve. You're a better looking guy now, Steve. What the hell's going on here? He's a great guy. I'd like to begin by asking a question, a very simple one. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? Very simple. No, I don't think so. With your vote on Tuesday, I will end inflation. I will stop the invasion of criminals coming into your country. Your country is under siege. We have criminals of all variety, murderers, drug dealers. We have some of the worst terrorists in the world in our country right now. They may live right by you. They let them in by the tens of thousands. The worst administration in the history of our country. And if we let this slip away, we should have our heads examined. I mean, we, you know, we have a big lead. We have a big lead. The fake news, they don't tell you this. We have a big, a beautiful lead. All we have to do, Mike, all we have to do is go out on Tuesday and vote, vote, vote. We're going to win it. And if you do that, they can't win, okay? I wouldn't have said that a week ago. You know, this early voting, we've set records in early voting, which is something Republicans just don't do. They wait. But we have records. But you go out and vote, vote, vote. Don't look. Like, well, I just came in on that really beautiful plane, and I have all sorts of access. You know what they're saying? They're projecting us to win, some people. I don't want you no. No, 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 no. I want you to forget I said that. Is everybody have a bad memory like the Democrats do, okay? They have the worst memory in history. They're the worst people, too. But look, you got to vote. So forget what I just said. Forget what the guy who projected Some guy projected me. I probably like him. Probably like him. But we are. We're really doing well. We're setting records, but we have to go out like we're on the four-yard line, not the five-yard line, slightly better. All we have to do is carry that ball over that thing. We get into that end zone, it's over. And see, that's within our control. The nice thing is, it's within our control. That's something nice about that, right? Because we're doing really well. Amazing the way they went out. And I'll tell you something about North Carolina. So I was one of the first people down, maybe the first person. I followed him, and I followed that sucker storm. I followed it. But then I said, I better let them just get their stuff. And I figured FEMA would do a good job. They did a horrible job under the auspices of this. These two people, I got to say these two people, but and you know, right now I'm saying, who the hell's running the country? Nobody even knows. Can you imagine President Xi of China or Putin or anybody? They want to call. They say, who the hell's running that country? It's the first time we have a country well, we don't even know who the, who is running it. Nobody knows. Let's call the United States. Who do we speak to? Most of them say Donald Trump. Just call Donald Trump. You know? That's what they're saying. But we're going to bring back the American dream. It's going to be brought back at the highest level. And this is all you have to know. Kamala broke it, and I will fix it, and it'll go quickly. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. So, this is the big moment. We have a situation where if we do the right thing, we're going to have an America that will be bigger, better, bolder, richer, safer, stronger than ever before. If we do the wrong thing, 
we're going to go home empty and our country is going to fail. Our country is failing. We're a failing nation, by the way, in case you had any question. Hard to believe, right? But this election is a choice between whether we will have four more years of incompetence and failure or whether we will begin the four greatest years in the history of our country. And, you know, we're starting them from behind. We're like starting them from, from behind the end zone to bring back the football. And we're like, we're like off the field because of what they've done to this country. In four years, what they've done to this country, they should be ashamed of themselves. This will be America's new golden age. It's going to be a golden age. We're going to do it. We're going to, you know, I've gone 62 days in a row doing this. 62. Can you imagine? And last week, she took one vacation, two vacations. I said, you're running for something that's a hundred times bigger than the Super Bowl. How the hell do you take a day off? You can't. Even people that like me and they want me to, oh, please, sir, be nice. Just, we just want you to enjoy your life, sir. I said, are you kidding me? We have a chance to turn this country into a miracle. It's going to be incredible what we do. I'm not taking any days off. <laughs> We're not taking any days off, right, Mike? We don't believe in taking days off. No, but she takes days off. I don't think so. In fact, just the opposite. I don't think so. I was going to say, maybe she's smarter than us. I don't think so. Now, that would be a story. Wouldn't that be a big story? I don't think so. She's done a terrible job. He has. They both are. They all say, please, sir, just mention her. He's gone. He said, yeah, but... You know, he had something. I usually like to say they did, but for purposes of this speech, we'll just say that Kamala did. Because nobody knows, if I use the name Harris, nobody has any idea who the hell I'm talking about. I don't know what that is. I say Harris, and they say, who's Harris? Nobody knows. Every problem facing us can be solved, but now the fate of our nation is in your hands. It's in your hands. If we win this state, that will be so big. And you know what I love about this state? You had Hurricane Helene. And I'll tell you what, I've watched a lot of hurricanes. I've never seen a hurricane that went from here down to Miami. I mean, you know, got the, the end result of it. It was very wet down there, not devastation like in North Carolina and Georgia. They've all, I'll tell you, states have done a job, but the FEMA's really let them down. They've really let them down. But when you look at what's happened and when you look at the kind of devastation, what was amazing to me, and I, th I thought 100 percent of the people, I was not thinking about the election. As time went by, I started thinking about the election. In the meantime, I had been there, raised a lot of money for the site, saw tremendous people like Franklin Graham. They were there so early, and he's always there. He's amazing. He's got a lot of Billy Graham in him. Got a lot of Billy. Got a lot of Billy Graham in Franklin. And, uh, you know, he doesn't endorse people, but he endorsed me. Is that nice? He endorsed me. He doesn't endorse me. But, but you know what? The amazing thing is that North Carolina was devastated. And yet, when I said when it was time to start thinking, we still have to think about this election, I said, I've just seen some of the worst devastation that I've ever — I've seen them all, because I used to go and follow the tornadoes, and we've seen a lot of bad things. But you had houses that were ripped apart. The foundations were ripped out of the ground. You had things that uh, you just don't see. No trees for two miles. I mean, big, giant trees were ripped right out of the ground and floated down in rivers that didn't exist. Areas that never saw water before were — became lakes and rivers. And I said, you know, it's largely Trump areas that were hit, meaning people that like Trump, right? They're largely Trump. I said, the amazing thing is that uh, we're going to have a problem, and I want them to just be safe. I don't want them to come back, and they don't have to register. They don't have to vote. So people lost their homes. A lot of people were missing and not found, as you know. A lot of people died. Quite a few people died. And you had people losing their loved ones. And I figured 
And I said to my people, I can't imagine more than 50 percent of what had voted in the past. I mean, I looked at areas. They were barren. They were gone. They were just devastated. And I said, so I figured if you got 50 percent of the vote would be lucky. I doubt you'd get, I would say, 35 to 50 percent. And that was it. Nothing you can do about that. Just try and help people. We did. We tried to help people. Here's the amazing thing. Early voting and the numbers finally came in. The areas that were hit so hard broke the record for registration. Think of that. And for voting. They broke the record. They never had a higher record. And these are people that don't even have a house anymore. The people of your state, the people of North Carolina are amazing. I'm telling you, it's amazing. I would have said, when I said 50 percent, I was sort of saying, I hope, I hope. People broke the record every single day, every — and now, cumulatively, the record's been broken. Now you only have to do one more thing. You have to get out on Tuesday and vote, and we're going to — we're going to break our own records. It's going to be a big difference, big — big difference. So on Tuesday, stand up. You have to do it. And we have to tell Kamala that you've had enough. You're the worst vice president in history. You did the worst job ever on hurricane salvage and remo removal and just the security, what they've done, it's so bad. You know, they spent their money on the migrants coming in, on illegal migrants. They don't have any money. FEMA's got no money. <clears throat> and just look at her and say, Kamala, we're not going to take it anymore. Kamala, you're fired. Get the hell out of here. They're terrible. They're terrible. They're terrible people. There's something wrong with them, actually. There's a lot of things wrong with them. But we got to win this race. If we, if we don't win, I can't even imagine, because we're right there. We're right at this step. Let's go get it over the line. And remember, you know, traditionally, not only traditionally, like every single time, uh, the Republicans vote late, the Democrats vote early. And an amazing statistic is, first time ever that I know of, we have far more votes than they have in the early voting. Think of that. It's never happened before. I think last time, we were hundreds of thousands of votes down. In fact, I remember. I looked. I said, how the hell do we catch them? And we caught them and fairly easily won, right? We were way down, and then we came in on the Tuesday. The two, we call them Tuesday voters. I think it has something to do with, like, you like to see your ballot go in the box. You like to be there. You want to watch it. You want to touch it and feel it. But uh, we were hundreds of thousands of votes down last time, and the first time. And it's like a racehorse, you know, he's way out in the lead and somebody else, Secretariat's coming behind and Secretariat catches him and not even that hard. But it's really, uh, it's really something that we're going to do. It's something that's expected. And uh, the difference is that we're actually starting from in front. I mean, so we're starting from in front. And it's an amazing thing. But the amazing thing is with that devastation, the people in North Carolina, got out and voted in record numbers. I can't believe it. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. And everything we've been fighting for so hard to achieve for the past nine years, it all comes down to the next two days. We've been waiting nine years for this, if you think. We've been waiting nine years. And don't forget, we got more votes than any sitting president in history last time. We won in 2016. We got millions and millions more votes. You know, Barack Hussein Obama got far fewer votes his second time. Remember, did anyone ever hear of Barack Hussein Obama? He's been nasty, hasn't he? Oh, he's been a nasty person. He's been a little nasty. I'm not, you know, I'm supposed to be a nice person. Oh. Oh, I was so happy to see that he was nasty. It's now or never. This moment will never come.
Again, never going to come again. Two days. Two days. For the sake of your family, for the sake of your country, for your freedom, you have to get out and vote. And, you know, I love that phrase because I saw it with a fighter. It was in the 15th round. That was when the fights had the championship rounds. It was unbelievable. Like maybe Roberto Duran, and he was a little bit behind, and he was a great champion. And they said the same thing as I or very similar, except they were a little more violent about it as they smack him. They're smacking him. Roberto, this is for your family. <laughs> And he got up and he went wild and he knocked the hell out of the guy. You ever see that? It's, it's great. I love that stuff. Don't we love it? We love like guys like Dana White that do such a good job, right, UFC? Yeah, but he said, Roberto, and they're smacking him. And, uh, you know, different kind of a champion. But we're champions and this whole state everybody here is a champion we can all be big winners so everybody and grab anybody you can just grab them and say we're gonna vote you know who wants to watch sports on television when you have that this is the biggest sport of all i'm telling you i was saying do you think this is bigger than the super bowl by a hundred times or a thousand times it's like a thousand times these guys said so, so much is made of the super bowl this is a thousand times bigger than the super bowl with your help, we are going to defeat Kamala Harris. We are going to win North Carolina. And we are going to make America great again. That man. Four years of Kamala have delivered nothing but economic hell for American workers. Her inflation disasters, they caused inflation. They screwed up my energy policy, and the prices went up and everything else. It's real simple. In addition to that, they way overspent. They got trillions and trillions of dollars. Hopefully, we get rid of Mitch McConnell pretty soon, because he helped them. That guy. Can you believe he endorsed me? <laughs> Can you? That boy, that must have been a painful day in his life. Every time I, th I think of it, he didn't have to do that. He provided the necessary votes. What a disgrace. But we have great Republicans running, and you have one of the best of all right here, David McCormick. You know that. Where's David? Is he around someplace? You know, we just left him. He's a great guy. But her inflation disaster has made life unaffordable, and the cost to families is $30,000 a year just in higher prices. That's what you paid. And just this week, we had the worst jobs report in modern history with only 12. Okay. So, I can't believe this has happened. Thank you, sir. I can't believe it. The report was — came out — they thought it was going to come out after the election. This is the worst job and jobs report that I've ever seen. So usually it's, you know, 250,000 jobs have been — because, we, you know, you grow and it's almost automatic. So I guess you saw this, Steve. That was probably the first thing you saw. 12,000 jobs were created. That's like for Walmart. That's not for a country, big country. 30,000 private sector jobs were lost. They were killed in a single month, 30,000 jobs. This were the numbers that just came out. Nearly 100,000 manufacturing jobs were wiped out from the beginning of the year. Those are the really primo jobs. 150,000 Americans joined the unemployment rolls in October. And nearly a quarter of a million, 250,000 people dropped out of the labor force. That's like a depression. Just think, a few months ago, they fraudulently claimed — and it was a fraud — they claimed — I mean, real, this is a serious fraud — that they had 18 — they had 818,000 jobs were created in the country, and none were created. Zero. You know about that, right? And they got caught by a whistleblower. A whistleblower blew the whistle on Crooked Joe and 
Kamala. They're crooked people. They're bad people. You gotta win this. They get them out of there, get them out of there fast. So think of that. They created 818,000 jobs. Wow. And even that only brought it up to being okay, but it was, you know, it wasn't like a disaster, but it brought it up to okay numbers. People were a little surprised because everyone knows the economy stinks. So all these jobs that had added up to being, you know, like not a big story. But a whistleblower was in there where they do the statistics, and he couldn't take it. And he blew it out of the water. And the press, the fake news back there, they hardly covered the story. And now they've just revised past job reports down another 112,000. So that's almost a million jobs. And uh, it was all fake reporting. If I did that, they'd say, all right, let's start up. Here we go again. Let's go. Because I've been under investigation more than the late, great Alphonse Capone. Has anyone ever heard of him? He's a lovely man. If he was with Mike Lindell for dinner, and Mike offered him a couple of pillows. <laughs> and if he didn't sleep well because he didn't like Mike's pillows, Mike had almost no chance of living. He would dispose of Mike somewhere in a foundation of a building or something. You would never see Mike again. Mike does not want to have dinner with Scarface, right? I've been under investigation, Mike, more than Scarface. Can you believe it? Alphonse Capone, the meanest of them all. He was the meanest. If he didn't like somebody, it was over. He said... <laughs> you know, I just uh, left another good place in North Carolina. I had some of the best quips today. You have a, a wit about you. Who the hell made that say? Hey, now I had some guy in the other one. He was screaming that stuff, and it was so good, I had to stop, and the place went crazy. Now I have a new genius back here. Now, that's amazing. Meanwhile, 100% of the net jobs created, you've heard this, it's an amazing thing. They've all gone, 100% have gone to migrants. Did you know that? All the jobs that were created. These are depression-type numbers, and that's where we're heading if she's elected. You know, I always said, I don't want to be Herbert Hoover. It's so terrible. You know, he became president, and then shortly, fairly shortly after, they ended up with the greatest depression of our times. 1929-style depression. That's what you're going to have with her. She has no clue. She's like a child with economics. Have you ever seen answers like she gives? They ask her a question about the economy, and she says, uh, I grew up in a middle-class family, and we had a grass yard. Oh, it was beautiful grass. Oh. Under my leadership, we are quickly going to turn this economic nightmare into an economic miracle. We're going to turn it around very fast. You know why? For a lot of reasons, but you know why? Because we have a thing called liquid gold, and we have more liquid gold under our feet than any other nation in the world, including Saudi Arabia and Russia. And we took it from number four to number one in two years, and I was way number one, way higher than the two of them. And we were going to become energy dominant very shortly, and then we had a uh, nasty little election that took place. And uh, this time, they're watching a little bit differently, I guess. Who would have thought that could have happened? But we're going to make America wealthy again. We're going to make America affordable again. We're going to get those prices down. We're going to get them down quickly. And much of it's going to be coming right from underneath your feet. Much of it. And we can do that. Other countries can't. So it's a great thing that we have. And we're two days away from the best jobs and biggest paychecks and brightest economic future the world has ever seen. We're going to turn it around fast. And you know an industry I want to bring back? 
a lot of you aren't going to care about this so much because you're not in that industry, the furniture industry. You had the best. You had the best craftsmen in the in the whole world. I used to come down. I'd build a hotel and I'd always go to North Carolina and come to the different. I knew every guy, every place. It's here a lot. And then one day I said, "What happened to that company? I love them. They did a building for me two years ago." I said, "What happened, sir? Uh, they're closed." They've basically moved into China. The guys have stayed here. The talent is so talented. I used to take an arm of a chair. I say, "Can you do a little more action on it, sir?" Watch, ding, 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 ding. I said, "That's, that's it. Would you like us to carve your face on the chair?" Yes. <laughs> it was like, it was like the greatest artists in the world. These guys were unbelievable. What they could do. And so then we start buying furniture from China, and you know what happens? I buy, build this beautiful hotel. It happened a few times. Not good. Very bad. A guy comes in. He's got lots of money, and he comes into the hotel. Wants to impress his wife and/or girlfriend. And he comes. Nobody got. And he comes in, and he has this beautiful chair. Looked the same. Actually, not as good, but it looked good enough. And he sits down in the chair, and the chair collapses, and he goes on his ass. And then I get sued. I get sued. This was China. No, we're going to get that business back. We're going to do it through a serious use of tariffs, because you know what? We took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. Nobody else took in ten cents. Nobody else. Barack Hussein Obama. You know what he took in from China? Nothing. Nobody did. Nobody took in anything. I took in hundreds of billions of dollars. I saved our steel industry. I put tariffs. I put tariffs on the steel. You wouldn't have any steel. You would for all the things you make. You wouldn't have any steel. You'd use plastic. But then you'd find out plastic isn't quite as strong as steel. You'd say we don't want to build a plastic gun or something that you build. And uh, no, we did a hell of a job. But I took in hundreds of billions and. A lot of people like me. A lot of business people like me. The steel industry likes me, and I wouldn't approve, by the way, the sale of U.S. Steel. This was a great, great company 60, 70 years ago, our greatest company. And now, as you know, Japan wants to buy it, and I like Japan. I loved, I loved Abe Shinzo Abe. He was assassinated. He was a great man. That one. He was loved in his country too. He was a great friend of mine. But I went back to him. I said, "Shinzo, we have to talk." He goes, "I know what you're going to say, Donald. I know what you're going to say." I said, "How do you know what I'm going to say?" It has to do with the trade agreements, right? I said, "Yes, it does." How did you know that, Shinzo? Because you're smart, and nobody ever came to see us about that. We would have been open because it was a one-way ripoff of the United States. Japan got everything; we got nothing. And when I said to him, Shinzo, I have to see you. It was a friend of mine. I said, I hate to tell you, but we're going to have to change this. He said, I know what you're talking about. He, I said, you really understood it. He said, nobody ever came to us. We would have done something. We'll end up, unfortunately, having to do more for you than somebody else, which turned out to be right. And don't forget, I started from a little bit of a bad base because we had an agreement. So you know, it's better if we didn't have an agreement. But he was great. We made a new deal. We made a new deal with South South Korea. We made a great deal with China. But because of COVID, I don't even talk about one of the best deals I made ever. China has to buy fifty billion dollars worth of our product, and I heard it was going to be fifteen. I said, "How much are they buying?" To my negotiators, sir, fifteen billion dollars. I thought they said fifty, Mike. I mistook it. Fifteen, they said. So I said, "How much?" Fifteen billion. I said, "Oh." So then they come in. The deal's almost finished. I said, "Tell me about the deal, sir." They're going to buy fifteen billion dollars. I said, "Not fifteen. You told me fifty." They said, "No, we said fifteen, sir." I said, "You didn't say fifty. You told me fifty. I think it, they were probably right, but I didn't care. I stayed there." I said, "Go back and tell them it's fifty." And they did, and you know what? They agreed to it. Can you believe it? But 
I don't talk about it because of COVID. We did a great job on COVID, but, uh, you know, nobody really, nobody knew what it was. It was nobody ever, nobody had any idea what the hell was happening. But it came out of the lab, you know that, the Wuhan lab. And uh, every country in the world suffered so greatly. $60 trillion and tremendous amounts of death all over the world. Look at Italy and France. The countries were just destroyed over, over what I think was just incompetence. I don't believe they did it on purpose. They took a big hit, too, by the way. At the end, it looked like they escaped it. Man, did it get them. It did got China hard at the end. But Kamala talks about fixing the economy. I saw her yesterday. We're going to, when I get to office, she said, when I get to office, she's in office now. Just get the guy out of bed and tell him to sign the document. She said, when I get to office, we're going to do this or that and, you know, all stuff that she's never going to do anyway. And I say, why didn't she do it? Why doesn't she do it now? I said that in the debate. Why didn't you just do this stuff? I'm going to do this and that. But this was the worst yesterday because she said, I'm going to do as soon as I get to office, she's in office now. So if it's any good, do it now. But what she's doing isn't good, so I didn't make a big deal out. Kamala's plan will impose the largest tax hike in American history and raise taxes on the typical American family by more than $3,000 a year. And you know, she lies. Everything. She said, I'm going to impose a sales tax on the people. No, I'm going to impose a tariff on the outside world, and they're going to pay it for their privilege of coming in and robbing our jobs and robbing our companies for years and years. They like to say that's a, that the sales tax is created by a tariff. No, it's not. This is a, you know, look, I had a lot of tariffs. I took it. The most beautiful word in the dictionary to me is tariff. If I had more time, I'd say, no, it's third. I say religion and love. Religion, love, and tariff in that order. But I don't have enough time to do this, Steve. I got to get going here. I'm a little bit late. So most beautiful word is the word tariff because it's going to make us so rich. And we're going to save our companies. We're going to stop them from leaving. If I were here, I would have imposed a tariff on these people that drop furniture in our country for one-third the price, and it was no good. The furniture was garbage. I would have saved all your companies. That none, nobody would have, but I'm going to do it now. Because, you know, they're still left. They want our companies to move and get out. If we uh, build a car and we send it to China, they won't accept it. If we send it to even Japan, I mean, they're friendly. But, you know, some of our worst trading partners are the ones we get along with, like the European Union. They're brutal. They're brutal. You know, it's, oh, this nice village, let's go to a village. Austria and all these wonderful places. They're brutal. We're going to lose $350 billion with the European. We lose with everybody. And it can be changed around in literally a matter of hours. And the president has the right to impose the tariffs on these countries that have been hurting us, they've really been hurting us. It's so ridiculous. They end up closing. Everybody loses their job. Then they make it in their country, and then they send it back to us with no tax, no nothing. And we lose it. We lose it. We lose the company. We lose the jobs. We lose sort of everything. And it's so stupid. And all we have to do is the same thing. But we have a big advantage because we have the pot of gold. See, ours is really the pot of gold. Ours is the one that they want, but we won't have that pot of gold very long because the way these fools are running our country, we'll be a busted, we're going to be a busted country pretty soon. My plan will massively cut taxes for workers and small businesses, and we will have no tax on tips, no tax on overtime, and for our seniors, no tax on Social Security benefits. And our seniors need it. Our seniors, because they were, most of the seniors are on a fixed income. I'm not, but many of them are. Did you see Truth Social yesterday? It's become a rocket ship, like Elon's rocket ship. Truth, truth. 
No, it's become a rocket ship. But no, but most seniors are on, uh, you know, fixed income. And then they have to pay tax. I don't want to, because by my doing that, you will be at least breaking even for the pain that these people have caused you by allowing this inflation. Think of it. You would have had no inflation. You would have had no war with Ukraine and Russia. That wouldn't have happened. You wouldn't have October 7th with Israel. No, ex they had no money. Iran was broke. They had no money for Hezbollah. They had no money for Hamas. They had no money. They were, they were totally broke. Everybody was broke over there. The bad guys, the good guys were doing fine. And you know what? Everybody would have done fine. All we wanted to do, and, he, and they would have done it, such an opportunity. Iran can't have a nuclear weapon. Nuclear weapons are the greatest single threat to our country, but to the entire world. The power. I rebuilt our nuclear base. I rebuilt our whole military. We had jet fighters that were 52 years old. We rebuilt it with a lot of help from some of you great people in the Senate and congressmen who are here today, actually, a lot of them. And uh, we rebuilt our military. And in rebuilding, I rebuilt either renovated or bought new, brand new nuclear. And I, I know what it does. I know what it does. My uncle told me many, many years ago, he was a professor. He told me many, many years ago about nuclear. And I said, there's no way, Uncle John. But he was right. He was right. He was very smart. To rapidly reduce inflation, I will end Kamala's war on American energy, and we will drill, baby, drill. I'm going to drill, and I'm going to cut your energy prices in half within 12 months. You're going to be cut in half. 12 months. And we built 500 miles of wall. I heard the wall. We built 500 miles more, 571 miles of wall. We're going to add 200 more. Think of it. We were going to add 200 more. And uh, incredible what's happened. It's really incredible to see, to see the devastation that they've left in our country. And uh, we're going to turn it around. We're going to turn it around so fast. You're going to be so happy. It's going to be a miracle to bring back millions of jobs. We're going to lower taxes on businesses, but only for those businesses that make their product in America. And if these companies don't make their products here, then they will pay a tariff when they send their products into the United States for the privilege of competing with our workers and our now protected companies. We're going to protect these companies that move in. They're going to move in by the thousands. They're going to move right here. But they're going to move in by the thousands. And we are going to protect. We're going to really protect these uh, companies. We have to. Otherwise, they'll leave just like the other companies left. They're going to be protected. And you know who else is going to be protected? Our workers are going to be protected. And you'll, they will not have had a jobs fair like we're going to have. You know, I, I deal with, I don't know, there's something nice about automobiles and automobile uh, production. And I was in Detroit at the Detroit Economic Club making a speech a few weeks ago. And Detroit's been devastated, you know, just years and years and years of abuse by other countries. They took their cars. A friend of mine builds auto plants, and I said, you know, about a year ago, a year and a half ago, I said, I want to see an auto plant. He said, okay, when do you want to do it? I said, anytime. He said, you'll have to come to Mexico. I said, why Mexico? He said, because that's where the big ones are being built. I said, you mean so they build them and they send them into the U.S. across the border? Yes. The big one, the biggest one of all is being built by China. It's massive. And I'm going up then a couple of weeks ago to Detroit, and I'm trying to explain to them what's going on. They're stealing their businesses. They're taking everything. And I said, listen, very important. We're not going to let this happen. And I let everybody know at this forum, and actually a little before the forum, that I was going to impose a 100 percent tax on any cars that are coming in from Mexico made in this plant that was only built to rip off Michigan and rip off Detroit. This plant was bigger than practically all of their plants put together. It would have devastated them.
And I made the statement very strongly, and that was about it. Sort of forgot about it. And I saw him, like, a couple of weeks ago in the audience. And I said, would you do me a favor? Tell that gentleman, his name is John, I want to see him. He builds auto plants, the biggest, I think he's the biggest guy, biggest in the world. He's very good at it. And he said, uh, comes backstage, I said, hey, John, how's that big plant that you're building or getting ready to build in Mexico, owned by China, how is it? Oh, sir, that's been dropped. I said, what? He said, they dropped it quietly last week. They're not going to build the plant because they think you're going to become president and you're going to put tariffs on the cars that come across. And they've decided that they'd lose a fortune and they've, they've dropped the project. How about that? Does the press write that? I don't think so, but that's okay. You know who knows it? The people of Michigan, because we're up in Michigan, too, and we're going to win Michigan, and not necessarily because of that, but we're going to win Michigan. But isn't that beautiful? And I did that without even being president. It's pretty good. So we're going to protect you, and we're going to protect them, and we're going to protect everybody. We're going to protect... And by the way, if they want to build the plant anywhere in the country, here, in... Or... I don't care where. I'd love to have a couple of them built right in the middle of Detroit, to be honest with you. Wouldn't that be nice? You know, they've suffered badly. No, they've been ripped. But they're going to build it. I said, if you want to build the plant, and I told him to tell the people, big, massive company, tell the people, I would be honored if they want to build a big, beautiful plant here, hire our workers, we're fine with that, and we're not going to charge them any tariffs, you see. I say, the way you get rid of the tariffs is to build your plants in the United States of America. That's what we want. And they're going to be coming in here by the, by the hundreds and by the thousands, and we're going to have them come right here. So it will be really, in the truest sense of the word, it's going to be America first. It's all about America first. As we rescue our economy, I will also restore our borders. And over the past four years, Kamala has orchestrated the most egregious betrayal that any leader in American history has ever inflicted on our people. What she has done to our country, and him too, but he put her in charge. She never made one call. Border Patrol endorsed me two weeks ago. You know that? They said, he's the greatest president in history. I said, does that include Abraham Lincoln and George Washington? They actually said, yes, it does. But they also said one other guy, he's sort of a young guy, like 38, he said, Border Patrol, he said, he's the greatest president in my lifetime. I wasn't impressed with that statement. So I liked the other one better, the captain. I liked him much better. He said, big difference between in history or in my lifetime if you're 38 years old. I think he was young. I think he was like 30. He's the best president in my lifetime. I mean, you know, give me a break. They're great guys, though. These are great guys. And uh, they gave me the strongest endorsement. They said that, the best president, and the best president by far we've ever had on the border. We had the great... Okay, put that sign up, my, my favorite sign. Put that sign. This is my favorite graph. Oh. I sleep with that. I wrap it around. I kiss it at night. Because without that graph, I'm not here. I hate to tell you. I'm not here without that. But look at, importantly, look at the, the big red arrow at the bottom. That was the lowest point of illegal immigration ever that we had known in recorded history of our country. And look what happened. That was when I left. That was my last day. It was the lowest point. And that included human trafficking and mostly in women. I hate to tell you that. Do you know that they're missing 325,000 children, and the press doesn't talk about that? Think of what that means. You know, people say, oh, 325, you know, they, 325. Do you know what that means? 325,000 children are missing or dead. They came in through the border. Many of them probably are slaves. They say sex slaves, actually, but many of them are slaves. And they came in through 325,000. Their parents will probably, for the most part, never see them again. What a, what a place we're living in. What a place we're living. But that graph illustrates how good. And then take a look to the right. That's where these lunatics took over. Kamala. 
That's when she took over. Our great borders are. Those numbers are unprecedented anywhere in the world. There's never been a third world country that allowed. Millions and millions of people came in. Look at that. It's like an Elon Musk rocket ship. Look at it. Now, look at that, those numbers. So it's a very sad thing. She has violated her oath, eradicated our sovereign border, and unleashed an army of gangs and criminal migrants from prisons and jails and sane asylums and mental institutions from all around the world. They come from Venezuela. They come from the Congo in Africa. A lot of people coming from the Congo. And where in the Congo? From their jails. They're emptying their jails into the United States of America, stealing countless American lives. People are being killed on a daily basis. Today, I want you to hear directly from a mother whose world has been shattered because of the open borders, stupidity of Kamala. Please. Sunday night, I asked her to not stay up super late because of her coming to work with me in the morning for us to do her summer school. She said, okay. I told her good night and I love you. I went to bed, not realizing that that was gonna be the last time I saw her. Huh? We're best friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got shaking again. <laughs> I woke up to notice she wasn't in her bed. I'm in my heart trying not to lose my mind because I don't know where she is. I finally remembered her phone had a location on and her phone was pinging just two minutes down the road right behind the skate park. I start driving to the direction the phone was being pinged at and I see a couple cop cars with lights on. I see yellow tape and immediately my heart drops and sinks to the bottom of my stomach. My daughter's hands and ankles were both bound. She was strangled to death, with left with no pants. And I know in my heart, she fought incredibly hard. She was not going down without a fight. We begin with two men we're learning are charged with capital murder tonight, accused of killing a 12-year-old girl. Police say these men strangled her before dumping her into that creek. Both men were in the country illegally. Apprehended, then released by Border Patrol less than three weeks before Jocelyn's death. The men accused of killing Jocelyn Nungare are affiliated with the gang, known for brutal violence. Kamala Harris was in charge of immigration in our borders. If we had better border policies and not open borders and not these catch and release policies, I truly believe this all could have been prevented. Under her being vice president of this country, my daughter's life was ripped away from her. She had her entire life ahead of her. Happy birthday, dear Jocelyn. My daughter is six feet in the ground based off of policies that she allowed to keep. Kamala Harris did have one job, and she not only failed, not me, she failed my daughter, she failed Jocelyn. You know, she was only 12. <laughs> President Trump reached out, gave me his sincerest condolences as not a former president, but just as a father, someone who cares. I believe Donald Trump needs to be back in office, I can at least know that my next child will be safe in this country. Thank you. That's taking that's taking place in different forms, different ages, but it's taking place in our country now by the thousands. These are some of the worst criminals in the world that are coming in. These are criminals, the likes of which we've never even seen. They make our criminals look like nice people. These are tough, tough people. MS-13, they don't like using guns because they're not painful. 
They use knives and they chop people up, Long Island. And if we didn't have the great patriots of ICE, we're tough people, but they love our country. And Border Patrol, they're great. They want to do their job. They're not letting them do the job. But if we didn't have those people, it would be unbelievable. We moved thousands of MS-13 gang members out of our country. And that's why Border Patrol says there's never been anybody like Trump. Tom Holman said it. He said he's the best we'll ever have. You'll never get better. We had, we had a perfect thing. When this guy used to go to the beach all the time, all he had to do is leave it the way we had it. And it was just getting better, better, better from years of abuse. But we had it down to a science, and we'll do it again. The difference is it's much worse now than it was in 2016. You know, in 2016, I got elected, I think, mostly because of the border. But that border was nothing compared to what you have right now. We put up all that wall. We got Mexico to give us thousands of soldiers free of charge. I said to him, look, if you don't give them, I'm going to put tariffs on your cars coming over. But other than — and they said uh, — first they said, we are not going to do that. After I said the tariffs, they said, sir, it would be our honor to give you as many soldiers as you'd like. And we had a very safe border, and we did a good job. And most of these things that you'd watch now or that you read about, I think all of them, they would have never happened. The day I take the oath of office, the migrant invasion ends, and the restoration of our country begins. And when you vote on Tuesday, vote in honor of Jocelyn and Lakin Riley of Georgia, and Rachel Morin, and every American who has been stolen from us by Kamala's border betrayal. It's a total betrayal. Remember, not once in four years did she call anybody in Border Patrol. How are we doing? I called them all the time. I drove them crazy. How are we doing? How's it going? Never once did she call. Never once did she visit. She visited one time in an area that had nothing to do, you know, she liked it. But essentially, never once did she visit. If she wins, you will live the rest of your life as second-class citizens in your own country. That's what's happening. I used to say, not so long ago, that Venezuela went bad. You know, Venezuela, 18 years ago, was a thriving country. They had elections, they had everything. And then one day it went bad. And the same thing happened there as happened here. Same kind of scum that we have to deal with all the time. Guys like Adam Shifty Schiff, can you believe it? Fake investigations all the time. The use of the FBI and the DOJ to go after their political opponent, who's kicking their ass. Isn't that great? But our nation will be sub — look, we're going to be dominated by this migrant invasion soon. And if she ever won, she would open the border and be the first day — Steve would agree with this — they'll open the border. They want open borders. I don't know why. Nobody knows why. Either they hate our country, or they maybe want to put them on the voting rolls. That's probably the reason. Or they're stupid, but they're not stupid, because you can't be so stupid when you do what they do on elections, right? If I win, the American people will be the rulers of this country again. The United States is now an occupied country. Can you imagine I say that? And nobody disputes it. If you take a look at what's happening in Colorado and Aurora, Take a look, where they're taking over complexes of apartments and big swaths of area. But all over the country, it's happening. A lot of towns don't like to say it because they think it's bad publicity and people won't move into that town or that little city. But it's the big cities, too. It's New York and Chicago and Los Angeles. But it will soon be an occupied country no longer. It's not going to take long. You know, these guys come in, they're vicious, violent. And like military age, but they have military quality equipment, military quality guns, rifles, equipment. November 5th, 2024 will be Liberation Day in America. It's going to be Liberation Day. On day one, I will launch the largest deportation program in American history. I will rescue every city and town that has been invaded and conquered. These towns, think of those words. 
These towns are being invaded and conquered. What the hell? And nobody disputes me on that. And we will put the vicious and bloodthirsty criminals in jail or kick them the hell out of our country as fast as we can. And to expedite removals of Trende, Aragua, that's the big gang, the vicious gang from Venezuela, and MS-13 and other gangs. They're savages, savage gangs, savage people. They're savage people, actually. I will invoke the Alien Enemies Act of 1798. See how far back we have to go? Because they didn't play games back then. They weren't politically correct. They wanted to run a country. And sometimes you have to be strong. 1798 to target and dismantle every migrant criminal network operating on Americans. So we'll get it done fast. And if they come back into our country, it's an automatic 10 years in jail with no possibility of parole. And I am here by calling for the death penalty for any migrant that kills an American citizen or a law enforcement officer. And I will immediately ban all sanctuary cities in the United States of America. They're sanctuaries for criminals. Everything Kamala says is a lie. She has no vision, no idea. She has no solutions for anything. In fact, all she can talk about, this was the other night, they'd ask her a question, she'd say, Donald Trump did this, Donald Trump did that. All she can say is, Donald Trump. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, I will speak about Donald Trump. Donald Trump, 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 Trump. What the hell did I have to do with it? It's all she talked. What are you going to do for the economy? Donald Trump? Man, is she bad? How about 60 Minutes? You see that? We're 60 Minutes defrauded the American public. You saw that. She gave an answer that was so bad, it was grossly incompetent. It was like taking a thousand words and throwing them on a wall. And so they did something that I never thought, that I never even heard of. They took her entire answer out, every word, Steve every word taken out, and they inserted a new answer, and they got caught. So watch what happens. We actually, on your behalf, if you don't mind, we sued CBS in 60 Minutes, okay? Because you know what that is? That's election interference for it. So their news organization, 60 Minutes is their, is their star. CBS's news organization in the middle of an election, think of that, changed the answer to a question in its entirety, right? I mean, I don't know how they respond to it, but they'll figure a way, I guess. But we did. We brought a suit on Friday against them for a lot of money. That's so terrible. No, I've never heard of a thing like that. I think it's the worst, most egregious broadcast fraud I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of bad things happen with these people, but that's about the worst I've seen. Kamala's campaign is running on nothing but hate and demonization, calling half of America now garbage, you know. Joe got up and he said, they're garbage. You're garbage. I'm garbage. Meanwhile, Kamala says she would not do anything different. I won't do one thing different. What would you do differently? Remember the 325,000 children. Wouldn't that be nice if they handle it differently? Remember all of these things that we talk about tonight? She said, I wouldn't do anything different. Take a look. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. I stood there on the tarmac watching you check your watch. The chaotic and deadly U.S. evacuation from Afghanistan stunned Americans and the world and cost the lives of 13 U.S. soldiers. Would you have done something differently? There is not a thing that comes to mind. More than 13,000 illegal immigrants convicted of murder have been caught at the border and then released into the United States. The Afghan national is in custody today after being accused of plotting an election day terrorist attack. The 
suspect entered the U.S. on a special immigrant visa. Got wrenching new details in the murder of Georgia nursing student Lakin Riley. The illegal immigrant suspect who cops say committed the heinous murder is a Venezuelan national who crossed the unsecured southern border back in 2022. Two men investigators say are in the country illegally from Venezuela are charged with capital murder and the death of Jocelyn Nungaray. A fifth illegal immigrant accused of attacking two New York City police officers over the weekend showed no remorse or regret. Would you have done something differently? There is not a thing that comes to mind. Only 18% said the economy is in excellent or good condition. U.S. inflation has hit a new 40-year high, increasing by 9.1% over the financial year. Authorities saying train day Aragua, which has been linked with more than 100 criminal investigations here in the U.S., has now been found operating its criminal enterprise in apartment complexes. Were you the last person in the room? Yes. Do you believe it? So if you want to end this disaster, you must get out and vote. We have to stop what's going on in our country. We're not going to have a country anymore. This will be Venezuela on steroids. We're pleased to be joined by House Majority Leader, a great person. He's been through hell. And uh, he was shot, violently and viciously shot. And uh, I told him before, you're better looking now than you were years ago prior to that. But I tell you, you are something. This man was, I went to visit him in the hospital and he, one thing I found out, his wife loves him. She was so devastated. I've been to areas where the wives didn't care that much. <laughs> this wife, he's got, a, he's got a great wife and she loves him. She was so devastated, she couldn't even think. Steve Scully, stand up, Steve. Look great. Amazing. He got hit hard, Mike, right? He got hit hard. He's a great guy. Thank you, Steve, very much. Say hello to your wife and family. Members of Congress, Greg Murphy and Dan Bishop. Thank you, fellas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Real uh, champions. Candidate for con Congress, and this is a fantastic woman. She has my complete and total endorsement, Lori Buckout. Lori Buckout. Great. Oh. She's something, I'll tell you. I hear you're doing very well. I looked at some good poll numbers. You're doing very well. Close it out. <laughs> Get out, vote for her. Lori is great. And North Carolina GOP Chairman Jason Simmons. Jason, what a job. Great. We're doing good, right? Yeah, we're doing good. Looks like good. Looks like real good. Somebody told me they pulled out. You know what pulling out means? That means they pulled out. They took their money and they ran because they weren't seeing good. I shouldn't tell them that, but, you know, I guess people will figure it out. I might as well be the one. Yeah, they pulled out. I also want to send our prayers to everyone here in North Carolina who's still recovering from this unbelievable hurricane, the size of it, Hurricane Helene. Kamala's hurricane response was a disgrace and it was a betrayal. It was just reported that almost 50 percent of phone calls sent to FEMA were unanswered. They didn't answer. They don't have the money because they're bringing in all the criminal migrants. You cannot trust this person to be president of the United States. She destroyed San Francisco, and she will destroy our country. We're not going to let it happen. Here are the facts. Just in closing, Kamala is a radical left Marxist, rated even worse than crazy Bernie Sanders or Pocahontas herself. She destroyed our economy. She was an original creator of Defund the Police movement. And anybody who wants to defund the police for even one week or one day is not worthy of being President of the United States to me. Kamala vowed to abolish ICE, and she pledged to confiscate your guns and endorsed a total ban on handgun ownership. She even called for free sex changes for illegal aliens in detention at taxpayer expense. And perhaps, worst of all, she never worked at McDonald's. No, it was a lie. It was a lie. She's a liar. With your vote on Tuesday, we are going to fire Kamala. We are going to save America. We will cut your taxes, end inflation, 
slash your prices, raise your wages, and bring thousands of factories back to America. And we're going to bring them back, a lot of them back to North Carolina. We love this place. Always been, it's always been so good, so good, just so good. We will build American, we will buy American, and we will hire American. I will end the war in Ukraine. Would have never happened if I were president. I will stop the chaos in the Middle East, and I will prevent World War III, most importantly, from happening. I mean, we're, we're, we got people negotiating on our behalf. They have no, they don't have a clue. You'll end up in World War III. Yeah, it's, it's true. We will crush violent crime and give our police the support, protection, resources, and respect that they so dearly deserve. We will strengthen and modernize our military. I rebuilt our entire military. We then gave a big chunk to Afghanistan. Wasn't that a lovely gift? And now every year they have a parade where they go down their main boulevard showing our beautiful equipment that we gave them so stupidly. We will build a missile defense shield, all made in the USA. Big one, big beauty. A lot of it's going to be made right here in North Carolina. We will rebuild our cities, including our capital in Washington, D.C. We will get all the graffiti off of those beautiful marble columns. And we'll make those cities safe, clean, and beautiful again. We will teach our children to love our country, to honor our history, and to always respect our great American flag. We will get critical race theory and transgender insanity the hell off our schools and out of our schools. I will defend religious liberty. I will restore free speech, and I will defend the right to keep and bear arms, Second Amendment, which is under siege. After years of building up foreign nations, defending foreign borders, and protecting foreign lands, we're finally going to build up our nation, defend our borders, and protect our citizens and our lands. We will stop illegal immigration once and for all. We will not be invaded. We will not be occupied. We will not be overrun. We will not be conquered. We will be a free and proud nation once again. Everyone will prosper, every family will thrive, and every day will be filled with opportunity and hope. And, of course, it will be filled with the American dream once again. But for that to happen, we must defeat Kamala Harris and stop her left-wing, radical, crazy agenda of open borders and all other things. And we're going to have on Tuesday, a landslide that's too big to rig. Too big to rig. Right, Mike? Right? So please get out and vote. Get your husband. I know he'd like to watch television that day. Say, Harry, get the hell out of this because you're going to vote for the president today, Harry. But darling, I'd like to watch a little more time. Get up, Harry. We know who the boss is, right? For the past nine years, we have been fighting against the most sinister and corrupt forces on Earth. With your vote in this election, most important election we've ever had, you can show them once and for all that this nation does not belong to them. This nation belongs to you. It's very simple. It was hardworking patriots like you who built this country. And two days from now, think of it, two days. Oh, it's so beautiful. Two days from now, it is hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. After all we have been through together, we stand on the verge of the four greatest years in American history. We'll get it turned fast. With your help, from now until Election Day, two days, we will restore America's promise, and we will take back the nation that we love so much. We love our nation. We are one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. We will never give in. We will never give up. We will never back down, and we will never, ever surrender. Right, Steve? 
Together we will fight, 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 and we will win, win, win. Going to win, win, win. November 5th will be the most important day in the history of our country, and you will be so proud that you cast your vote the way you did. And together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America healthy again. We will make America strong again. It's going to be so strong. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much, North Carolina. And God bless you all. God bless you. Go and vote. Thank you, Mike. Great. Very happy. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody.